We begin our report with a ruling from Arizona Supreme Court upholding an abortion law that would criminalize the procedure with barely any exceptions. The law states a person who provides supplies or administers to a pregnant woman any medicine, drugs, or substance, or uses any instruments with intent to procure the miscarriage of such woman, unless it is necessary to save her life, shall be punished by imprisonment of up to five years. The language may sound outdated. That's because the law the court upheld was written in 1864. That's the same year Abraham Lincoln was reelected. The Civil War was in its third year in Arizona. For that matter, wasn't an official state. For more on the modern consequences and why they exist, here's CBS News Chief White House Correspondent Nancy Cordes. It is a dark day in Arizona. Arizona's Democratic governor begged the legislature to step in today after the state's conservative Supreme Court reinstated a Civil War era abortion ban with no exceptions for rape or incest. The author of the 4-2 decision wrote, physicians are now on notice that all abortions, except those necessary to save a woman's life, are illegal with doctors facing a two to five year mandatory prison sentence. We are 14 days away from this extreme ban coming back to life. It must be repealed immediately. The decision does away with the state's current 15 week ban, which anti-abortion rights activists had challenged in court. It's always the best decision to protect life as much as possible. Arizona is now poised to join 17 other states that have imposed near-total abortion bans since Roe v. Wade was struck down. But unlike many of those states, Arizona is a pivotal swing state that went for President Biden in 2020. The state's Democratic AG announced today, as long as I am attorney general, no woman or doctor will be prosecuted under this draconian law. Does that give doctors the certainty they need to keep performing abortions if they feel they need to? Well, I think that um, medical providers are going to have to weigh their options and their risk um, with their own uh, legal counsel, quite frankly. Chris Love helps lead Arizona for Abortion Access, a group that has already gathered half a million signatures for a November state ballot measure that would establish a constitutional right to an abortion. We have told Arizona voters what's at stake. Um, I think today is a clear example that we were being serious about that, right? The Biden campaign is counting on that referendum and others like it to help drive Democrats to the polls in November. The issue is a proven motivator, which could help explain why several top Republicans in Arizona came out against the Supreme Court ruling, saying it goes too far and is out of step with the state. John? Nancy Cordes, thank you. Kate Cernicke joins me now. She's a national reporter for The New York Times who has been covering this issue for a long time. Kate, give me your sense of exactly how this works out in Arizona, this law. Well, as the governor said in that clip, this will, in two weeks, this, this ban will take effect. The attorney general has said she will not enforce it. However, that we don't know what local prosecutors are going to do. And if you are a doctor um, in Arizona, are you going to take that risk of performing an abortion, saying, well, it, it was to save the woman's life, and then perhaps having some prosecutor come after you and saying, well, it wasn't really to save the woman's life. So we've seen this before. Immediately after Roe v. Wade was overturned, doctors in Arizona were uncertain about what the law was. And even though the law, this law, this, this ban was not in effect, there was no 15-week ban, the law allowed abortion, but doctors told us they were not performing abortions because they were so worried about the potential consequences. And that's happened across the country as these various legal issues have happened now and again. Right. People, there's a chilling effect. Absolutely, a total chilling effect, yeah. What's your read and sense of, Nancy mentioned a little bit, the politics in Arizona, how this yeah. affects that? So, as Nancy, I think, mentioned, the, uh, there is a ballot, me there, uh, and, um, sorry, abortion rights groups are trying to gather signatures for a ballot measure. They're doing quite well. They're overperforming on the number of signatures they have to get it on the ballot. What this does is really, it galvanizes the abortion rights side and really keeps the conversation about abortion in play. The Biden, the, the Biden campaign, the Democrats, don't want the conversation to be about the economy. Arizona is one of those swing states where the conversation might be about the economy. People are nervous about housing there, prices. This says instead, you know, this is now going to be about abortion. It's not going to be, are you better off than you were four years ago? It's, do you want to go back to 1864, when women, by the way, didn't even have the vote? 
Yes, and in Arizona, the economy and the border. Exactly. So that's the, the right. two bad top issues for Trump in that, excuse me, for Biden in that state. Yeah. Um, remind us again how these referenda have have gone, what we've learned politically about their success and how they're likely to play in 24. Yeah, so we've, so originally uh, these referenda were mostly used by, by anti-abortion groups trying to restrict abortion. But those groups have now backed off because they've seen that the referendum are going against them. Now what you see are abortion rights groups using these referendum to uh, to establish a constitutional right to abortion in the state constitution as there was in the federal constitution under Roe. So e even in conservative states like Ohio, P you know, voters came out to approve that. Voters said, we don't, we don't think the government should be making these decisions. We want there to be some fundamental right to, re to reproductive freedom, which is what they're trying to do in Arizona. And in Florida, they will be trying to do that Right, another swing state. So Arizona um, is a, Arizona's different because in Arizona you only need 50% to pass this measure. In Florida you need 60% to pass this measure. In other states, um, no state has passed, with, passed this with more than 58% of the vote. So 60% in Florida is going to be, that's going to be a real hurdle for them. In Arizona, I think what this does is ultimately brings out more voters for Democrats, more young women in particular who are going to support this referendum and are likely to support Democrats. Final question. Yeah. Donald Trump has had many positions on abortions. He's right. also comfortable with abrupt changes in position. <laughs> but recently he said that he supports the state's right to determine whatever their abortion right. law is in the state. How do you read that in the context of Republican politics or of abortion in that party? Well, I mean, what we're seeing in, abort in Arizona tonight is that this is what it looks like to send the decision back to the states. You're going to have some states with these really, with these very, very, frankly, ancient ancient laws in the books. Um, but Trump is smart. He knows that this is not a good issue. This is not a winning issue for Republicans. So the less they say about it. What was striking with this, this decision in Arizona today was anti-abortion groups were really pretty quiet about it. The Democrats were thrilled. They're sending uh, Kamala Harris, Vice President Kamala Harris, to Arizona next week to campaign on this. So I think Trump recognizes the best thing they can do, Republicans can do, is really not talk about abortion and make it look like they're the ones trying to compromise. He's saying, well, 16 weeks. You know, it sounds like a reasonable position. He's saying, it's, it's well, it's softer than, you know, some 1864 ban. But I think, you know, when we start to talk about what that means at 16 weeks and the kind of women who are going to need abortions after that and can't get them, those are the stories that are really moving people and bringing them out to support these ballot measures. Kate Zernicke of the New York Times, thank you so much Thanks, for being John. with us.